Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to Sea Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age. The embargo on this game has been lifted as per today and I'm very eager to show you this game. This is a game that's been in development for a long time. Um, back in 2022 I did a video on upcoming naval games for 2023 and I listed it there. It's now 2024 and the game is expected to come out this year. More on that by Microprose itself. Um, you'll find more information about that from them. I was kind enough to get a key, as well, along with a couple of other content creators, so I can show you some of the game. And that does bear some emphasis, because this is an early build, and there are things that are simply not colored in, that are not filled in, that are not yet working as intended. There'll be bugs, there'll be some things that are like, uh, for example, here's scenarios, playable scenarios. Um, there are a few playable scenarios, but we also get a mission editor. There is um, a dynamic campaign in the full game, but not here yet. So we're just getting the scenarios. I'm going to be picking the uh, valuable target. Small Soviet battle group is sent to intercept NAVO, uh, sorry, NATO cargo vessel transporting very valuable cargo. It's going to be our job to defend that. I have not yet played this scenario, so I don't know exactly what we're going to be looking at. Um, in this mission, your primary objective is to find and sink a cargo vessel transporting military cargo of high value from US to Norway. So, I am to sink it. I'm playing as the Grozny, a Russian, I think, destroyer. Intel has information that this vessel with a small escort will be passing north of the Faroe Islands. Important, do not switch camera on enemy contacts unless you uh, have visually ID'd them. It will take away the fun. You can also switch camera back to your missile to see what it will hit. The Kerch is your flagship. Do not lose it or you will die. Well, that's a bit... I think they mean you will lose the mission. Um, that might be a little bit more suitable. We're going to go to general quarters. And the first thing we're going to do is launch the Hilo. This is our ship. And immediately our ship is detecting various other... Sorry, we have three ships. This is going to be just one of them. What do we have? Pause it. So we have the Grozny. Um, down on the bottom left hand side you can see the name of the ship, you can see the speed, its current course, depth below the keel, as well as its weapon systems. So we have the uh, 20 SAN1s, we have the SN3s, we have RBU-6000, that's against submarines, we have SET-65, that's torpedoes, we have a 76mm gun, and we have a 30mm uh, Seawiz, it's those little things on the sides. These are going to be intercepting missiles if and when it comes to that. For self-defense, we have noisemakers, which are something you pop into the water. They generate a lot of noise, as the name might imply, and potentially distract a torpedo. And we also have chaff, which is going to come in handy if we do come under fire ourselves. Next, we have the Kerch. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This one armed again with... A whole, that's a lot of missiles. <laughs> the SAN-3. Uh, it makes sense. It's a bit more air-focused, I think. But we also have the SSN-14 Bravo. If I'm not mistaken, that's the big boys over there. Again, I don't know all the Russian designations, so uh, please excuse me on that. We have RBU-6000s. That's these little canister funds up front. It's a rocket-assisted depth charge. We have the 76mm uh, somewhere. Is this this? Oh, this is a 76. Yeah. And then we have the 30mm Sea Whiz over there, and we have the Noisemaker and the Chaff. Excellent, and the Strozhevoy is... Yeah, it's pretty similar. It's not exactly the same class, I think. You know what, we can just do this. This is a Krivak 1, and we also have the Kerch, which is a Kara-class cruiser, and Grozny, which is a Kinder-class missile cruiser. So, that's the assets that we have available. I believe that the Kerch has access to a helicopter deck. If something has a helicopter or aircraft, let's say aircraft tab, you can find that down right side at the bottom. This is going to allow you to launch the helicopter. So I'm going to launch the KA-25 PL. That's the helicopter. When it comes to these ships, uh, let's see where we are at large. So we're expecting... The map's going to load here. We're expecting contact pretty much north of here, if I'm understanding it correctly. Now you can see it's currently 5.30 Zulu, so that's local time. There is um, this 8.13, that's the time Zulu when we're expected to arrive. So taking uh, the time to this waypoint is about two and a half hours. You can go faster, 
But as the dev explained, it is possible for the AI to sort of figure out, hold on, a merchantman or a fishing ship might go 19 knots, but it'll not do about 36. So um, yeah, that will definitely increase the attention that the AI is giving you. We have a couple of radar echoes. We are, are we operating under MCON? No, we have our air search radar on and our surface search on. We don't have active sonar. Makes sense. We don't expect submarines. This guy's under MCON. And this guy's also under MCON. MCON means emission control. Don't make any noise. At least not electronically. So don't use your radar. Don't use your surface search. Stay quiet. This way, of course, you'll also be a little bit more safe. Because you're not just yelling out into the distance for anybody who wants to hear, Hey, here I am. As you might see from cold waters, we have um, contacts, but we can't exactly see what they are. We have a very large radar echo, and that's about all we know. And this one is altitude one feet and, and minus one feet, so it's most likely going to be a surface ship. But this is something else. This is most likely an aircraft, as it's on 10,000 feet. It would be a pretty interesting ship if it would go that high. All right. Um, where is my little window... There. Let's have a look. Because what is detailed here is how the helicopters bring brought up to the deck. The Russian ships don't have the hangar inside or right next to the, the helicopter platform. But they have it a little bit inside as far as I can tell. Okay, we have a new contact. But which one? Oh, there's another aircraft here. Yeah, they're on different altitudes. All right. Now, I should be able to ask these people who they are. Request, identify yourself. They might go, yeah, I don't have anything to share. Um, they might just say who they are. If it's a passenger liner and it does not want to get shot down by a couple of Russian ships, it might be in its best interest to at least start communicating. I don't know what they are, but at least they're staying at 10,000 feet, which I believe is passenger liner altitude. So those should not be that big of a deal. All right, what I'm going to do is use the helo, which is just about to take off. You can actually hear that. We're in height, 27 feet. We're going to push it to 10,000 feet. I want to use this thing as a sort of over-the-horizon scout. Come on, dude. Places to be. There we go. I think it hasn't quite registered what I wanted to do. I want you to go here. And I want you to do that at about... Fine, 10,000 feet. I'm going to stick to that. There we go. Now, seeing as this thing is far higher, it has much better chance of detecting more stuff. And boom. We suddenly have a lot more contacts. Okay, we have this thing fully identified. This is an airliner. Give me visual on it. There you go. It's the Pangea airliner. Does not need to get shot down. Over here, though, what's all this? We got a, lar a semi large. We have a large, another large, semi-large, semi-large, and very large. Okay, let's just let the game run for a bit so we can figure out what is going on. We are looking for a cargo ship, that's for sure. The helo should just continue on its way. My ships can maintain their formation. Or actually, no. I want Storozhe Void to slow down a bit. Like... Head one third. And I want you to just wait here. Just head this way. Still getting these semi large contacts. They're 35 nautical miles out. Which should mean that if I really wanted to, I could shoot them out of the water uh, with the SSNB 14s. That's a missile with a range of, well, up to 27 nautical miles. So we're not quite there yet. It's the Rastrub. Russian. Oh, sorry, this is the anti submarine uh, missile. I'm looking at the wrong type. This is the anti-air uh, cruiser, isn't it? Don't press any wrong buttons or you'll launch a missile. Yeah. Anti-aircraft is the objective for this one. 
The SAN-4 is also an anti-aircraft. Secondary anti-surface, so it can be used in that role. What about my other ships? Because I do have other options. Sometimes the game is like a little finicky about whether or not it wants to switch. Here we go. Unit reference, what sort of missiles you got? Because you bring the big ones, right? Uh, the Yeah, that's the anti-surface, anti-air, anti-submarine. It's unfortunate because we're not really expecting submarines. Grozny has the SSN-1 and the SSN-3. Yeah, okay, this is the anti-surface one. This is the Shadok. And the SSN-1 is the Volna, which is anti-aircraft. Can do anti-surface if it has to. Range, 16 nautical miles. And this one has a range of 242 nautical miles if you really want to. It is active radar homing, so I believe it is capable of detecting its own targets. Which means that the launching platform in this case does not have to use radar. Which is very nice. This ellipse that we're seeing over here is where the contact is expected to be. Because this is like the direction that we're detecting things. We don't really know much more beyond that. I'm going to tell the helo to take a more southeasterly course. So that we're going to do a sort of cross... Cross detection. If that makes sense. Cross detection on our own detection. Uh, I want you to go here. You're currently cruising at 6 knots. I want you to start cruising at 6 knots as well. Wait for the Grozny to catch up. I want to have these ships close together. So that when the missiles do start flying around. We're going to be able to at least help each other out with those missiles. And potentially um, spread out incoming missiles between the various targets. I mean, I hope it's not going to happen, but you never know. Yeah, this is about as high as we can go. This helo at 10,000 feet. It can't actually s visually see anything. But with its radar, it can definitely see stuff. So in that sense, it's very useful. Switching this stuff like... This is sometimes a little finicky. Okay, let it run for a second. We can figure out some more about it. I want to know what our target is. Or rather, where our target is. Okay, so you guys are in position. Excellent. Now you can all maintain your speed of, let's say, uh, ahead two-thirds. We go. All right, so that's handled. Let's see what the K25 is doing. Not really getting a whole lot more intel yet, but it's only been a couple of minutes of in-game. These mission. Oh. Okay. I see how it is. We have started shooting at each other. That is not very nice. Okay. So at this point, I think it's going to be right about time when we start defending ourselves. This does look like it might, might want to seek out my helicopter. I might be able to save it. But I kind of doubt it. Uh, we're going to go on MCOM. And I want you to go uh, weapons free. I doubt that this helo is going to have any kind of a chance. We instantly know what sort of missile that is. It's an M54. Right. My helicopter is about to have a very bad time. Yeah, that's problematic. So they shot down my eye in the sky. That's unfortunate because it means that I lost radar contact on all of those. That is unfortunate. I should have drawn a line bearing figuring out where that kind of came from. Because now I don't know anything. And I'm fresh out of helicopters. Hmm. Let's go. Where are you guys? 
This one is on um, air search and surface search because the mass is only so high. And the higher the radio, sorry, the higher the radar is, the more I can see. So I'm kind of waiting until stuff gets into range. Yeah, we're getting some more contact at this point. I can wait for visual identification if I feel confident enough. But I can't say that I really do. How close are we to the others? Oh, very close. Good. The radar contacts. Yeah, we're now picking up the guys again. This one is already at about 18 miles. We got one at 22, 23, and 21 and a bit. Okay, this is a merchantman. So this is not hostile. This is just a cargo ship, just a tanker. I can disregard that one. That's good. As for these other ones, I think that missile kind of came from over there. Yeah, that would just about line up. And how far... Oh, whoops. How far away are you? And then this... Going to ruler. Yeah, we don't know how far away it is. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah, this was a bit finicky, they said. Uh, map, erase that, and draw a new one. Drawing tool. Yeah, let's go with the ruler. So that could, could be 23 nautical miles. It could be more, it could be less. I simply don't know yet. We'll just have to figure out as we get more information about the target. Okay. I could just go loud and have all of my ships go with our radar active. That might be preferable. But it'll also be a bit of a giveaway that I am not approaching with just one ship, but with three. The question is, is that news to them? Because considering that I have already launched a helicopter, which they promptly decided to shoot down, and... Oh, hold on. Yeah, we have a hostile contact. Confirmed identification. We're looking at the Berkeley DDG-15. And um, I can... Yeah, this is most likely <laughs> most likely hostile. Oh, actually, I should just ask these people to kindly identify themselves. They might go quiet. They might actually respond. And they can just ignore you if they so want to. Okay, so we got the Adams... Let's see what we can do about the atoms. Um, which ship should I use to engage? I think... This is, again, where my issue comes in with the Russian ships. I'm not that well versed in it. But I think that we got these uh, large missile tubes on this ship. Which I believe are... What, the SAN-4s? No. Oh, uh, that's the anti... Yeah, anti-surface. Secondary purpose anti-submarine. My bad. Okay, dude, um, you are going to go active. Surf search radar. You're going to use your air surface radar as well, because I'm expecting that we're going to see some sort of response. And it's probably not going to be friendly. So what we're going to do is... Oh, which one was it? The SSN-14? Yes. We're going to pop a couple of SSN-14s onto this target. One. Two. They're now engaging this track with two missiles. Hatch opening. Missile away. This is probably when we're going to start seeing uh, a bit more hectic things pop up. As our own missile, of course, is moving to the target. Looks to be dropping off a torpedo by the time that it gets there. Yep, and the RGM-84, that's a harpoon, is already coming to me. This is the moment when we start saying weapons free. Uh, weapons free on you. You're going to go and activate your weapons and your radars insofar as you haven't already. Uh, I want you on weapons... Yeah, I want to... No, I want to stay on weapons tight. I don't want these ships to blast through all their weapons before I've told them to do so. That's a harpoon heading for the Kirch. Okay. Turn broadside. 
to try and maximize my chances of um, getting the, the Sea Wiz into a range. There's another missile coming in. Gentlemen, shall we engage this missile? Just asking. There we go. Missile's loaded. Missile away. I should have probably done that a little sooner. There's the Sea Wiz. As I have said, this is when it's going to get a little more hectic because there's more missiles coming in. We have the SN, uh, SAN-3 going for that one. This one appears to have missed the target. Perch. Deal with that. Storozhevoy. Deal with that. Proceed. Missile out. Perch. Perch missile away. Oh boy. Yeah, he's going to go for the death drop. Harpoons like to dive onto their targets. Ah. Oh, he missed him. The shaft took him out. The shaft distracted him. Beautiful. But that's just one missile. Uh, there is plenty more happening <laughs> where that came from. What about our own missiles? Are oh, they still on target? They have also been using their... Yep, we got a hit. Boom. Good hit. Not necessarily the end of that ship yet. Oh, hello. We got the Spruins over here. And something else that keeps popping missiles. There's a parry. The Oliver Hazard parry. So, if you got the Spruins there, this could be the cargo ship. Alright. Grozny. I want to engage the Spruins. I'm not sure if I'm using the exact right weapon platform for this. I'm also going to be careful that I don't waste all of my missiles on one target. But I think that destroyer needs to go, because if I'm not mistaken, this thing is popping those harpoons right rather than the sides. Uh, the parry can also launch harpoons, and it's using its guns already. Got a missile out. We pretty have lost visual on that missile, that uh, harpoon that was coming in. That's the dangerous part about those harpoons. Oh crap, we've been damaged. I didn't even notice that. Perch is fine, Storozhevo is fine, but Grozny is not. Damage control. Uh, we have quite a lot of <laughs> shit that's just been destroyed. Um, we have one damage control team, which is currently working away on controlling the flooding and the fire amidships. And as a weapon platform, I think this thing is largely out of the question. This is not exactly a combat-capable platform anymore. So that's a problem. Uh, Storozhevoy, deal with that. Storozhevoy is also dealing with incoming missiles. No. I think it's just doing direct gun shooting against the target. Incoming harpoon. Yeah, that's the target for Storozhevoy. Come on. Take it out. Good lord, we're getting just death spammed with these things. Oh, that's the Grozny. Uh, you. Weapons free. Shoot whatever you want to shoot. Same for you. Oh, crap. Yeah, you're hit. How about... Dead? I cannot select it as an active platform anymore. I think the ship is just dead. We already got lifeboats uh, or, or uh, life rafts in the water. So you're toast. Grozny is toast. And Kirch over here is fighting for its life. Come on, dude. Intercept those missiles if you want to live. Ow. 
problematic. Are we dead? No, we're not dead. For some reason, I cannot right-click this ship. Oh. Damage control. Moderate hull damage could have fooled me. A lot of the systems are offline. We do. We still have the SN3s. We still have the guns. There's another harpoon coming in on Grozny. Grozny looks to be pretty badly flooding. There she goes. <laughs> I'm not so sure the Kurtz can still shoot anything. Because maybe some of her systems have gotten so badly damaged that... Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure she still has a radar. Even the Seawiz have all been disabled. Oh, they're targeting Grozny again. Grozny is dead. What about the Spruins? Spruins is not looking too hot. Spruins is not looking too hot. We fire another one of those big SSN-14s at her. Also want to engage the parry. Um... I'm not sure if any of these systems are still functional. Come on, knock out the Spruins. Boom. Again, it's not like ships instantly explode. It's not World of Warships. But I think that this ship is going to be having so many issues that it's not that likely to survive. We have another visual track here. Oh god, there's more missiles coming in. Standard missile one. What are you even trying to... You're not trying to target anything anymore. Cool. Well, the flagship is still here. It's not doing very hot. I mean, well, yeah, it's definitely doing very hot. There's a lot of fire aboard. Now, we have two damage control teams. One of them is working on containing the fire and the flooding. And the other one is... Assumed dead? Not sure. Oh god, and there's another harpoon coming in. I cannot stop it. This could very well be the end of me. Here comes the up ramp. And happily dive onto your target. Chaff. You missed? Wow. Excellent. Well done. Okay, we still have an SSN-14 in the air. Just keep shooting at the parry. Crap, they intercepted it. I have one more missile left. I'm going to go out on the limb. And I'm going to say this one's a uh, hostile. Never mind. Mission failed. I have lost the ships. The Motherland's Wolf mourn her fallen heroes. We are sure they did their best. Yes, but I still have lots to learn about this game. I think it looks great. Um, it looks great in the sense that visually it's extremely appealing to me as well as all the mechanics that you are looking at. Uh, don't mind the after action report. The AR is just a work in progress. Um, score 155%. Don't mind that. So, that's my first encounter with Sea Power. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'm going to be covering this game a lot on my channel and that means you'll be seeing it again very, very soon. Thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.